welcome everybody. Uh, I've got uh, Sandeepan with me, who's the CTO at Just Dial, and um, I think we'll, you know, I'll talk less and let him do a lot of the talking. And uh, you know, let's let's sort of you know start uh, a little bit with a uh, you know, quick background of the you know the highlights of the journey of Just Dial from the time uh, you started till you know what uh, where we are now. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have money here today. He would have been better guy to tell about the journey. I have joined it midway, uh, so but I'll tell you what I know of the history. Money's first venture was too far out of its time. It failed. That was in 1989. It was called Ask Me. Um, but a lot of learnings came from it. One thing he learned was everyone remembered the brand, could not remember the number to call. And without the number, at that time there was no internet, so phone was the only way to get the information. So he kept all these learnings in mind, and in 96, when he thought the telecom thing is going right, he start, wanted to restart. Uh, he used to stay in Bandra, actually, but he decided to move to Malad simply because that was the exchange which was 888. And he wanted a number which everyone could remember. So he went there, and he somehow convinced the guy to give him the number which was all eights, so that no one has to be retold the number again, and that's how Jazel started in 96. Uh, it ran on its own steam. There was some flirting with, uh, I think, India Infoline and stuff, where some sort of stock swaps and co-growth and all those things were talked of. India Infoline didn't work out very well, so money was again back into driving Just Dell. And 2006, we had the first PE come in, followed in 2007 by the second PE. And um, third PE is in 2010 or so. And last year, we went public with the IPO. That's the journey in short. That's the financial journey in short. Uh, as a consumer thing, um, it grew from zero. It was profitable from day one, and it still is profitable. That's, I think, a big, very big difference from whatever else uh, we have seen elsewhere. But uh, I, I can know the journey from 2006, since when I was associated. Uh, we were very happy with 42,000 calls and queries through phones a day. We were not on the net and all. Not because we couldn't go it, but because we didn't think the environment was ready for it. Uh, today we stand at about 1.8 million queries a day. Uh, and phone has become 27 to 30% of that overall thing. Though it has grown, it's about 4,400,000 calls a day. Excellent. So uh, if you were to look back uh, on, your, on this journey, uh, what would you, uh, you know, consider your single biggest uh, success factor? And on the other side, what has been your biggest challenge, uh, you know, over, over this period? Um, local search is all about relevancy <clears throat> and being very, very uh, relevant in terms of usability of the addressable environment. So you should not go far ahead just because it's easier to do or more uh, savvy or more glamorous to do. You should stick to the basic principles and focus on being relevant to your clientele and your user base. I guess the resilience is a key factor and not taking shortcuts, going out there in the open, trying to collect data in a data stuff country like India, taking endeavor in, in those era was quite commendable. Going out, getting data, putting people on the, on, the, on the job from door to door, getting the data. I think that speaks a lot about building the fundamentals, right? Um, staying humble is probably one of the salient features I would singularly point to the success. And I'll quote money here. Uh, just because you're the best doesn't mean you cannot be better. So I guess that has been the mantra which has sort of kept us uh, humble, hungry, and uh, focused on where the user should be and relevant. And from, uh, you know, from a challenge perspective, what do you see? What has been the single biggest uh, you know, uh, challenge that you really had to overcome over the last uh, few years or so? And how did it really I go I think it's a common it? challenge we all face. Uh, um, today, if you look at the entire world of services or anything, um, it's not logic exactly. It's more about being able to judge perception better. And, and, and that means to be a good listener. And you may be going wrong somewhere, but how do you keep yourself sanitized and not let your ego take over, but let the numbers speak for them or the success speak for itself? I think the biggest challenge has been that are we on the right track? Is it happening? Keeping a watch on it day on day and making sure that we are learning and learning at a rate which is faster than what the anticipation of the person is growing. Unlike uh, other things where you have a set target and a moving and a stationary goalpost, 
here the person's expectation or user's expectation is ac actually exponentially growing. Keeping up with that, staying ahead of that is a challenge we face on an everyday basis. And that's what makes our job fun. And I guess it's a challenge and the opportunity and it's just two sides of the same coin. Right, I understand. Uh, to just to you know, take on from uh, what we said, I think uh, you know, one of the you know, things that we were speaking about earlier is uh, just dial as a company is, is difficult to classify. You know, <laughs> is, 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 is it a telephone search? Is it, is it online? Is it e-commerce? And clearly, you know, from what, what I understood from you, it's, you know, it's all of it, right? And it's really about user experience uh, is, is what we sort of spoke about. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? I, I'll ask you a counter question. I mean, my, my point is, does it really matter? Uh, it doesn't. So what, what we really focus on is, I don't think we are doing anything new. I don't think we are adding new um, words to our, uh, what we do. I guess we have always been focused on I want two simple things, enable local commerce, be relevant and usable to whatever your addressable market is. In 96, networks didn't work, your internet used to conk off every two seconds, mobile was not even thought of, it didn't make sense. And we booked the domain in 97, but we got started with our website and made it live only in 2007, when we thought there is enough traction, and it's 2008 that the thing happened. So I guess we are enablers of local commerce, we are enablers of entrepreneurs, and we feel that given our history and the, given the way we have flourished, uh, the latent efficiencies have already been exposed by the entrepreneurs. We don't have really a very good environment which supports logistics or things of that. So these guys have figured it out. The best we can do is trigger the efficiencies already latent in them and, and make, enable them so that they can exploit the user demand which is coming from the online side. So what online means has changed. It was phone, then it became net, now it's mobile. Tomorrow it could be you know, I mean your, your PlayStation, it could be your watch, who knows? But staying relevant is the key part and keeping focus on what your purpose in life is, which is enabling local commerce, is, is what we focus on. Tell us a little bit about uh, you know, uh, the, the whole e-commerce uh, play that you've been thinking about. How is that different from what is traditionally sort of considered e-commerce and how uh, some of the other players in the you know, industry look at it. How, how are you looking at it and how is it different? I, mean, I, I don't know how you define traditional e-commerce. Uh, that's the first question I have. Like even, even mail order cataloging system in the US was kind of an e-commerce uh, to my mind. Let's look it, at it the was relevant. So uh, as I said, we are only enabling local commerce. Yeah. Today a person, I, I mean let's say five years back a person was happy taking the restaurant's number from us and then he would call up, ask for directions or ask for the menu items and then probably reserve a table. Today his expectation is I should be able to do that right after the search. So we are just naturally extending on that forte. Similarly, before a person used to look for, let's say a Nokia, I mean, okay, not a Nokia showroom anymore, uh, let's say a Samsung showroom and, and then um, he just figured it out, went there, saw the models and all. Today he expects you to display it there and then he wants to go out, do a price comparison, see where he can buy it best from, and then just figure it out themselves. But what we saw is mainly the issue on the supplier side. One is, what do you tell him? That you go on and do your homework every day in the morning, come here and uh, fill up whatever quotes are so that we can publish on the site. So we took a slightly different tack there and we said that we will do it on demand, but we'll do it in a very um, India-friendly way maybe when, when the actual requirement of comes, please send a quote of your SM, or, or SMS of your quote within two minutes. The first 10 is the, per, is the people will send the quotes to the actual buyer and then he decides. So there is, there is a sign kind of a time window, which is a window of opportunity. You cannot wait endlessly for the quote to come, but at the same time, it should be as fresh as possible. So that way you really handle the market dynamics far better and you, you take the opportunity or uh, you understand it's a bad day to buy your stuff. Uh, over the next uh, two to three years, what is uh, you know what are your uh, key focus areas, or you know, what what are the areas that are you most excited about and working on? Uh, nothing in particular. Um, it, it's it's just playing a chess game every day. So I, I guess everything will be equal, equally uh, challenging coming going forward. Uh, given the kind of uh, support system we are seeing. 
I, I personally am looking forward to you know some sort of a sweet point between online, offline, but coming on online because there are online business models, there are offline business models. It doesn't really matter because for the consumer, he will go from where he gets the best service. But there will be a sweet point and some sort of a hybrid system of uh, wh what the user gets to choose from, irrespective of the functionality, it will happen. Um, as many of them hinted, uh, we have seen this trend for the last uh, four or five years. Uh, I'm very, very uh, eagerly looking forward to how it takes off in the non-glamorous, non-metro cities and how that option takes place. Because Will we be relevant as local search? Because it's such a small locality, everyone knows everything. So what is local search? We were wrong about it. People do a lot of local search because they don't know about everything in their own cities themselves. So probably that's another interesting thing they said. And the third aspect we have seen, which we feel will be interesting, is how does uh, the people who have grown with the mobile in their hand, when they get the purchasing power two, three years later, I mean, they will be the first batch to graduate probably in three, four years, how do they purchase differently. It will actually be a very uh, drastic jump. It will not be a, a smooth swing like we are seeing because certainly these people who, have, who don't know any other thing, who, are, who have grown up playing uh, Xboxes and PS2s rather than video games on Mitashi and all, when they get the purchasing power, how are they going to really be different? I, whether it will be different or it will be a natural flow, I think that will be an interesting inflection point. Sure, great. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, really nice talking. Thank you. Thank you so much.